The US calls the F-35 the most technologically advanced machine ever built. But recently, it did something the US probably isn't too proud of. In fact, it embarrassed the US in a way that tainted the fighter's reputation, possibly beyond repair. So, what did the F-35 do? Well, it got stuck. I already made a video on this but for a quick recap, this incident happened in India. It landed, and it couldn't take off again. Here's what happened. The jet ran into bad weather over the Arabian Sea. According to the pilot, the aircraft started showing signs of trouble. Playing it safe, the pilot sent a distress signal to a nearby Indian airport, and India allowed it to land. The landing was successful. Now, that alone? Not a big deal. This sort of thing can happen to any aircraft. Mechanical problems, emergency landing, fixed in two or three days, standard stuff. But that's not what happened here. Once the F-35 landed, it basically became a metal sculpture. As soon as its engines were shut down, the jet was grounded for weeks. Repair started, but nothing worked. Even Lockheed Martin engineers flew in and still, a month later it was sitting on that runway until it was eventually moved to a hangar. Apparently, the fighter was done sunbathing after four weeks. And here's the awkward part. Donald Trump wants to sell these jets to India. Starting this year, we'll be increasing military sales to India by many billions of dollars. We're also paving the way to ultimately provide India with the F-35 stealth fighters. But this is not the kind of demo India wants to see. No one wants a fighter that's flying fine one day, and turns into a giant metal paperweight the next. Especially not a country like India, that has such good neighbors who'd love to eat it whole, without even stopping to burp. Now let me tell you why this is bad for the United States. This incident is a massive PR failure for both the US and the broader F-35 brand. Especially in India where optics, sovereignty and reliability matter far more than fifth-gen buzzwords. It's not just about one stranded jet. It's about the message that JET now sends to Indian voters, officials, and defense planners. The fact that it's taken weeks to repair a single aircraft, despite it being part of the most expensive fighter program in history, reinforces the very concerns India already had. Long maintenance cycles, dependence on foreign parts, tight integration with US command and control networks, and unanswered questions like, how would the F-35 stealth coating hold up under India's hot and humid climate? And remember, India has PTSD when it comes to the word delays. Not just from its own projects, but from partners too. Even Russia, considered India's most reliable defense ally, has had spotty performance when it comes to spare parts and after-sales maintenance. And now the US is following the same script, with delays in Apache deliveries and the General Electric F-414 engine deal for the LCA MK2. And with this latest fiasco, the F-35 has revealed what might be its biggest weakness, repairs. Is the F-35 even made for India? Short answer? Not really. The F-35 requires climate-controlled hangars, especially because its stealth coating is vulnerable to heat, humidity, and dust. India operates across extreme heat, freezing cold, tropical moisture, and dusty plains. Very few aircraft can handle all of this without major localized adaptation. The US and UK store their F-35s in hermetically sealed, sensor-rich hangars. India would have to spend billions just to replicate that infrastructure. And it gets worse. The F-35 has a highly centralized maintenance structure. Parts and software are locked behind US security protocols. Even the UK, a key ally, doesn't have full transfer of technology. That means Indian engineers would be permanently dependent on Lockheed for complex repairs. To make things more frustrating, the aircraft even needs server-level approval from the US for diagnostics and updates. 
Compare that to India's other fighters, Su-30MKIs, Tejas, even Jaguars, all of which have been adapted to local MRO ecosystems. Why that's a deal breaker for India. India's defense readiness depends on fast repair turnaround, especially with two hostile borders, logistical independence during crisis, and aircraft that can be repaired in field or at regional bases, not ones that sit grounded while waiting for American engineers to fly in. The F-35 doesn't support this model. It's a first world Air Force jet, highly potent, but logistically brittle in a developing environment. India is not the UK, a country that hasn't seen real combat in decades. India lives under constant threat from two nuclear powers. An aircraft that becomes a repair headache is not an asset. It's a liability. So, why would India buy a liability? It wouldn't. Unless, the F-35 is used as a strategic handshake with the US. A few jets are bought, not for combat but for tech familiarization, joint training or quad operations. Or if Lockheed offers something massive in return, AMCA partnership, full transfer of technology, or access to advanced avionics. But under current conditions? It's a hard sell, even to Western partners. Just look at the UK. Their F-35B fleet has its own troubles. A recent National Audit Office report revealed only one-third of Britain's 37 F-35s were fully mission-capable. Critical weapons like Meteor and Spear 3 won't be integrated until early 2030s. Persistent issues, staff shortages, part shortages, performance gaps. Despite spending £11 billion, lifetime costs are projected to hit £71 billion. Don't get me wrong. The F-35 is a superb warplane, in the environment it was built for. An environment where, you're always near a climate-controlled base, you have trained contractors for every bolt, and you're operating within a tight US-led coalition. India is not that. India needs, reliability, autonomy, adaptability. Not high-tech, sex appeal, that falls apart when the AC breaks. Unless the F-35 goes through a radical localization process, which is highly unlikely, buying it in large numbers would be a strategic liability. On the AMCA, critics often complain that it's taking too long. But they forget, AMCA is India's first full-spectrum fifth-generation fighter. Tejas took decades because India had to build everything from scratch. Sure, there was significant negligence, both at DRDO, and in the Ministry of Defense, delays in decision-making, slow procurement of testing equipment, and endless cycles of paperwork made progress crawl. But India also had to develop avionics, fly-by-wire systems, composites, radars, and even the very design culture itself. AMCA isn't just a fighter, it's a platform for independence in future air warfare. Rushing it would only repeat the mistakes of the past. The best examples of India getting it right? its missile and naval programs. China is a different game altogether. It builds fast because it can throw billions at defense projects without any real oversight. But despite the flashy rollouts, their FC-31 and J-20 still rely on Russian-style engines. Much of their rapid development is driven by the need to match or intimidate the US, not because the systems are fully operational, exportable or sustainable. And when something fails, they bury it. No one finds out. India doesn't have that luxury. As a democracy, every failure is public, whether it shows up in parliament, the CAC report, or the media. That's why, for India, the AMTA project has to work, 